All right. So, yeah, runner, photographer. He occasionally works at an agency. Give it up for Fred. So, um, photography's been in my family for a number of years. My grandfather used to have a dark room in his basement. My dad, who is retired, shoots every day. And my brother is a trained photojournalist for the military. So it's really no wonder why I like photography. If you want to know, the best camera you have is the one that you have with you. And if you're anything like me, you started with something that looks like that on the right hand side, and it's a point and click. When we first had our first child, I realized a point and click was never going to cut it because you're never going to be able to capture the moments you needed to have. So I moved to a DSLR. That was a huge colossal mistake because I started to get in photography and I started to accumulate gear and stuff because I didn't want to go pay someone to go take pictures of my kids. But I was also the guy that carried everything with me, everyone, just to get that maybe shot moment of my kid smiling. I did that for a number of years. And over time, lugging all that gear around became a colossal pain in the ass. So I stopped taking photos. Now, yes, I had an iPhone and I accumulated things with photos, but at the same time, it just wasn't the same. So I started to actually, when I found the Pixel 2 and saw that photography is going more and more mobile, I started to really adopt it. And so I started to figure out how I can up my game of photography and reinvigorate my passion without having to lug around big gear. So this is Peter McKinnon. He is a photojournalist. He is also a YouTuber out of Canada. He recently did a side-by-side -side snapshot of a multi or a thousand dollar, a couple thousand dollar camera or a cell phone. Which one do you think is which? Take a guess. Would you have thought the one was a cell phone? This is, again, side by side. So the point of this is that cell phones are getting really damn good at photography. So now let's think about ways that we can actually take better photos. So here's what I do. So I'm going to walk through a couple things that I've learned to adapt to just taking normal photography and adapting it to my phone. The first is what we call the rule of thirds. Now I could have taken the sunset shot on a January afternoon, and I could have just taken the landscape with the sun. Instead, I decided to bring in the foreground with the trees and whatnot. And what you could do, everyone has this, go on your phone and turn on the grid. This is going to help you immensely in just trying to figure out how you can compose pictures to make better shots by just not doing something straight on. So rule of thirds. The second is, what I've learned is, the crop. I was at a, coming home from a dinner after work. I stopped by the Chicago Theater, set a stoplight, like, ah, want to take a shot. Boom, two seconds, classic running gun. But that is not something that, it's a great shot, but how can you make it better? So embrace the crop. I didn't want the red thing on the side. I wanted to pull the sign in further, do some other things that may make it pop. Embrace crop. So just because you take a shot doesn't mean you need to keep the shot. What I've also done is learn to not just stand in front of something and take a picture. Crouch down, look for a different angle, take a step back. You'll be amazed at what you can actually look and see and do. In this particular case, it was a rainy day on LaSalle Street, could have done the Board of Trade, I wanted to get the reflection in the ground. I got down really close, took that picture a centimeter from that water to get that reflection, crop it, start to induce some mood, you can also make your photos pop just a little bit more. The next thing that I always recommend is also think about framing. Again, crossing the river. Everyone's seen the shot of the train. You probably had that shot of the train. It was a fall day. I wanted to bring something different to the picture. I wanted to embrace fall in Chicago. Who doesn't love fall in Chicago? So how do you bring the pictures with the different moods? So I could have just taken the bean. The bean's a classic, but how do you actually do something? Walk around, take a different look, crouch down, find ways to bring in other elements to your photos because then you can frame it better to take better shots. Finally, setting a mood. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Also tells a story. This was a dinner that I had with bosses and clients and Rhett and other whatnot at the Alice, down at the Soho house. Quick, again, turned around, took a picture. But that picture was also where we had a great client meeting. It's something that I will have a memory of. So how do you take it now? I want to sit at this table all the time and have a meal. Because this is now something that tells a story about where you can have conversations, have emotion that goes into it. Now I'd be lying if I told you that all those photos were taken straight out of my cell phone without something else. So I found, in my DSLR days, they call the glass with your lens. I now carry a piece of glass in my pocket all the time to help with this. These are moment lenses. I also am not afraid to edit my photos, as you probably saw. So I use Lightroom Mobile, take a shot, crop it, correct it, 
use sliders to make the images a little bit better. These are things you could do easily, free, download. Because at the end of the day, you only have the best camera you have is the one you have with you. If you want to embrace moments, you want to take pictures that are lasting memories, don't just take a picture. Take a picture that you're going to want to have forever.